What is going on everybody? Uh, in this video, we're going to do a quick run through of setting up AWS Toolkit and Visual Studio Code. Uh, we are going to show how to connect to AWS uh, using the worst possible method uh, you could use, which is the way I usually do it, honestly. Uh, but it is a huge security risk. Uh, we're going to go through uh, the not so wrong way to connect and then just barely touch on uh, probably the way larger organizations in production, enterprise scale, uh, go ahead and let their devs connect uh, to AWS. So let's jump right in. So I have a relatively fresh install of Visual Studio Code here. And I'm just going to go here to extensions and look for AWS. And go ahead and install AWS Toolkit. And I do apologize, I am fighting a bit of a cold, so I will try to keep the sneezing, coughing to a minimum. So what we're going to look at here is AWS Explorer, which lets us view, modify, and deploy AWS resources. So if we click there, uh, we get kind of this uh, obscure start URL. It says it's uh, provided by an admin or help desk. Uh, we're actually gonna scroll down and do uh, I am user credentials. So it's looking for a profile name, an access key, and a secret key. If I go over here to AWS, I am logged in with my root account, which is Spark account. Uh, if you just click on that, there's a drop down and you'll see security credentials. Click on that. Uh, you will come to this screen and scroll down a little bit and you will see access keys. And we're just going to create an access key it yells at me because I am logged in as root. Uh, if someone were to get a hold of these keys, they can spin up resources, uh, Bitcoin miners, run you into the hole for a few million dollars. Uh, use your imagination. Uh, malicious actors certainly do. So I will just check the box saying I understand the risks and go ahead and create that key. And I will be deleting this right after this video so don't try to authenticate as me or do you won't get in uh, so my account name is up here spark account and switching back I just need to put in spark account and the access key and the secret key and add that profile and success. So we can open up Resource Explorer. Uh, we have quite a few things here. Oh shoot, it dropped me into Virginia. Usually I like to select Ohio, uh, but we have S3, Redshift, Lambda, all these good things we can kind of play around with here through VS Code now. Uh, so if I go to S3 and expand that, uh, you see I don't, oh, Bucky McBuckface. Uh, you know what? Let's switch over and see that guy. I'll just go S3. And there he is. Uh, but now, because I've authenticated and my root account uh, has permissions, I can go ahead and delete. And I'll just put in Bucky Mick Buckface. And now if I switch back to the console here, give it a quick refresh, I do not have any buckets. Uh, switching back, I can create demo bucket. And let's see. Let's try that again. 
Maybe that name was taken. Uh, I didn't see these pop-ups down here that fails. I'm going to create demo B-C-K-E-T, some random numbers. I'm just trying to find something that is uh, globally unique, maybe across all AWS. Uh, so leaving out the U and just mashing the number keys, I was able to create a unique ID. And now if we refresh, we see we have our demo bucket there. And we can also, uh, let's see, we can also load things into the demo bucket. I'm trying to think if I have anything on this VM. Uh, have some Terraform files. Let's see, do I need to have that expanded in here? No objects found. Let's try that one more time. Here, I will go ahead and just scroll to it. a folder it's not what I want objects oh there we go the upload that should work and say I just upload build.tf there it is and we can even see it edit it um, Yep, yeah, and we get a little warning here. You are now editing uh, an S3 file. Save changes will be uploaded to your S3 bucket. And if we switch back here and go into the bucket, uh, we now have our build.tf file. All right, let's get rid of that. And demo. B-C-K-E-T, doesn't let us copy it, but at least it gives us the readout down here, which makes it a bit easier. And I think I've got an extra B. And that is now deleted. And let's go back to Amazon S3 buckets. Give that a refresh, it might take a moment and you see the bucket is removed. Uh, so the better way to do this would be actually to uh, just give the permissions you want to a user. And let's just go users. Here's one I created a little bit ago. I'm just gonna delete that so you can see me starting fresh. So if I come back to users, it'll look like this. I'm going to create a user. I guess I'll just call them test again. Go next. Add user to groups. I'm going to create a group. And I'll just call this S3 admins uh, because I want them to have S3 permissions. And full access here. I believe that gives admin permission. And don't need to add tags or anything. Not going to get fancy. And we can just create an access key here. Uh, you can read through these. Uh, kind of just recommendations of what you should do instead. Uh, it'll yell at you for pretty much all of those except for other. And I'm just going to check the box and hit next. 
test access key. That's fine. All right. So now we can go back here and AWS and sign out and add new connection. Get rid of these annoying little pop-ups. And I'm going to add another I am user credential and he is named test. Or I guess that's gender neutral, so he or she is named test. And I am connected. Uh, failed to load resources. I would expect to see that if they didn't have S3 permissions, so uh, let's check that they actually went into the group. Let's see. Okay, so I don't know how I missed adding them to the group. Is there a refresh? Sign out. And let's go back to test. And there we go. Uh, not sure what happened there. Uh, S3 admins, uh, put that to a group, attach the user to the group, uh, and generate an access key. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, but you notice if we go up here, we will get the big red X on all other uh, resources because this user does not have access to them. Uh, so this might be a great kind of learning tool if you're learning about permissions and uh, probably just better practices than using your root account. Uh, this is probably the way to go. Uh, if you're doing data engineering or just AWS projects in general, want to use it through Visual Studio Code, uh, create a user, create groups, add them to the groups, uh, and try to do it right. So that about wraps it up, and we are just going to touch on uh, that first option. Uh, we don't want to open Resource Explorer. Let's see. So here where it's asking for start URL. It is looking for an IAM Connectivity Center uh, URL and then that is usually connected to something like Active Directory or some other user directory, uh, probably not in AWS, uh, brings in those credentials. Uh, then you create groups, assign the accounts to the groups, uh, and then that is how access is delegated. And you can see that here. Uh, if I do IAM, oh, sorry, IAM identity center. Uh, so we'll click that and mm, I actually want to do East Ohio and enable. It's going to yell at me. Uh, I am not in an organization. Uh, so your account needs to be in an organization uh, to be able to use the IAM identity center. Uh, but it's just one button click. Uh, to create an organization or enable IAM Identity Center, uh, there's no cost uh, as of November 4th, 2023. Uh, anything beyond just setting up those two uh, basic pieces, I cannot guarantee there aren't any charges associated. Uh, and here is where you would uh, choose your identity source and uh, there we go. 
This is the AWS Access Portal URL. So if you read down here, and let's see, it, uh, somewhere in here it shows what it should look like. Uh, and it says it should end with start. Uh, uh, let's see. Actually, let's go ahead and just uh, see what error it throws us, because maybe that's where I saw it. Uh, US East Ohio. Oh, and I was still in the VM there. This is, you could set up uh, a user in here and it will let you in. Uh, it'll just say you haven't been assigned to uh, any apps. And anyways, I'm not gonna struggle on video trying to find where that start URL was, uh, but just in case you see that out there somewhere where uh, somebody delegates you uh, permissions in AWS and gives you uh, a start URL to use in VS Code. Uh, you can use these same steps to get that up and going. Uh, let's go ahead and go to management here and we're just going to delete this. No reason you can't leave it hanging but uh, I do like tying up loose ends and I always like it when we can copy and paste those and let's see, I'm also going to go to IAM. And I'm going to delete the user. And create, or sorry, delete the group. S3 admins. Just confirm that. And security credentials. And delete, deactivate, and then it's kind of hiding up here this time. And delete. Uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully, uh, that kind of got you going and saved you some Googling around how to connect to AWS Toolkit through VS Code. Uh, nice tool to have in your tool belt if you're looking for a graphical user interface to kind of play with resources and uh, spin things up that way. Uh, maybe combine that with some Terraform files and do some deployments. And then in VS Code, uh, if all your resources are those listed in the toolkit, you can see those spin up and just kind of double check your configurations or uh, probably a dozen other things I haven't thought of. But hopefully this helped some of you out there out and I will see you in another video.